now i'll just give you a recap what we have seen about data engineering in the previous session the first thing i always told you that try to relate it with some in terms of data engineers so i try to relate it to a, a backstage people imagine if you are having any successful movie everyone speaks to you on maybe actors directors maybe music directors but who is a real artist with help of them only the movie would have been successful the real artist is nothing but the people who are working in the backstage right people may never tell about the importance of this people right so similarly being a data engineer yes definitely i feel proud but we never been will never be appreciated in the real time right but that's fine end of the day it's all about the role here okay about this data engineering in detail so i was able to um, explain you like what each stage is all about if you are building a stage yes definitely it is going to be a data infrastructure uh, managing the lights and sounds if it's a, like a, a backstage maybe or i'll be calling as a data pre processing right all this i have related and i have also told you that data engineering is going to be the root of every other technology right and followed by we have seen a couple of use cases starting with amazon we are getting the data from the different data sources and we will be putting everything into one single uh, different files will be there now rather than having data from the different files like this which is going to take multiple time start to sort it or maybe to remove the duplicates to do the data cleaning and five people should be involved for data cleaning ideally i don't like this so i was able to replace it with one single system so all this data files bringing into one system and then doing the data cleaning data transformations was really preferable I imagine it's you people okay your your data we are getting from instagram facebook or linkedin if i call once saying that today is a demo class it's fine if i keep on calling today is a demo class today is a demo class if i keep on calling you get that irritation right so even though you have reached out to us via multiple source that doesn't mean that i need to call you multiple times right i need to overcome this problem so in order to do that i used to take care of getting all the data into one single place from there we start doing all the data cleaning data transformations and finally we are showcasing to the clients that's what we do right so this is what we have seen not only about this i've given you couple of other use cases as well right and i talked about the ayodhya temple what if i need to collect whoever is coming to this temple i need to collect all this i need not count multiple times so maybe i have to make sure i do the data cleaning data transformations everything correct so all this we were seeing about the use cases right and we talked about why nowadays everyone is talking about data engineering what about the last 20 years well from the last 20 years if you see the demand as well as the technological usage it's been increasing and if you see the graph here so people who are using facebook whatsapp youtube are like in billions right so for the last 20 years people have been using more and more right and that's what i have given an example right uh, today india sorry today ipl rcb versus chennai super kings match starts today but the same day i remember that the same thing i remember when we met for the first time kkr versus rcb the first time first edition but still we don't have any of the whatsapp or instagram that time right so the things have changed right the technological world has been changing all these years well this is about the technological growth that we have and finally we also start with understanding how this is a reason why data is getting generated well as a, as a plus data is getting generated in the form of internet users smartphone sensors all this okay and also i told you a simple a layman ex explanation suddenly what if 40 people comes to your house definitely you cannot maintain definitely you cannot manage when you cannot manage 40 people imagine that you're getting 40 gigabytes of data where you will go and manage it you need the organizing the data you need that infrastructure you need that efforts right so all this 
is making me to learn data engineering. If you are data engineer, 100% you should be able to manage the entire data. Tomorrow I have a problem in KSR. The first thing which I'll be calling you is, hey, can you come to us? Can you help us in doing the data pipelines? Can you help us in managing the pipelines? Can you help us in uh, taking care of the data? So all these are the few things which I'll definitely ask you if you are a data engineer, okay? With all the stories from today, we will try to see some technical words now, okay? We'll see some technical words. Now, what is this data engineering? As simple as data engineering, I'll be getting the data from the different data sources in the form of a flat files, Excel files, JSON files, or any file. I'll be extracting the data. And then I'll be using a transformation layer where in the transformation layer, I'll be cleaning the data, organizing the data, removing the duplicates, removing the null values, everything I'll be doing. Finally, I load it back into the system and this system will have the clean data now and anyone who comes to our need, yes, if you want to access our data, yes, you can access it. So we are the people who are trying to collect the data from the different data sources. We also focus on the transformation part. And finally, we are loading that into a target table. Now, this is what is your work. This is what is your work. Okay, I repeat, if you are a data engineer by profession, you will be working with clients directly. You will collect all the data from the different data sources, just like what we have in the KSR. In a KSR, a lot of students come from Instagram, a lot of students come from Facebook, a lot of students come from WhatsApp. So what you do if you're a data engineer, you collect all the three, put it into one place, remove all the duplicate students, duplicate email IDs, duplicate phone numbers, make sure that there is no null values. Finally, you publish it or maybe you can say that you can create it into a target table and this target table will have no duplicates, no null values and the best version of the data. From there onwards, we will be connecting to BI tools, right? Now, this is what is data engineering. Now, why it is needed? Can I simply ignore it? Well, that is what I said. You people are willing to join this course. We have to give you a call and remind you about this demo. One time is fine. If I keep on calling you multiple times, you get the frustration. Now imagine you have called us in Instagram yesterday and today you have reached us to WhatsApp. Great. So from yesterday, we would have called you in WhatsApp. Today, we would have again called you in Instagram. That means we are calling you multiple times. So there is high likely chance that you can get frustrated. So whether you come from Instagram or you come from WhatsApp, I'll call you only once because student is only once. Maybe the way is reaching out to us is multiple channels. So we need to always figure out how to have the best version of the data, right? And as in then, if you have the data, obviously you will have the proper system and more the data, more the analysis, more the revenue, correct? And without data engineering, remember this, Without data engineering, there is no data science or data. There is no data analytics. Right? There is nothing called data analytics or data science without data engineering. Remember that. And a lot of projects in the data engineering is coming to a halt because we don't have a proper data. So if data engineering is in demand, 100% it will also make the other technologies to be in demand. Okay. So all these are needed in order to have a data engineers, correct? As well as the data engineering tables. Now, with this, let's see how can we improve the system. In the real time, we are getting the data from different data sources, okay? Always remember the word called ETL. There is a word called ETL, okay? Now imagine every project you people will be doing ETL. What is this ETL, right? ETL stands for extraction. Extraction. You're extracting the data. And you're going with a transformation and loading. So ETL stands for extraction, transformation and loading. 
so as i said yes if you ask our business ksr business itself is a very small business we hardly work with 30 employees but if you see we are collecting the data from six social medias we are collecting from whatsapp facebook telegram right instagram linkedin like this we are collecting the data from different data sources well this is called is extraction we are extracting students information from six to seven social media don't think that we are focusing only on one area right so definitely we are thinking of all the ways that you can get the data that is what we are doing extraction post that extraction what we are doing it's up to us but in terms of extraction i'm getting the data from all the data sources and then comes a the transformation now what is this transformation sir as i keep saying that you have to put a lot of efforts in data cleaning data transformations remove the duplicates remove the null values all this i'll be doing finally i'll be loading back into one of the database or one of the place where that acts like your target tables okay now this is all about etl uh you people know english right so english we call it a synonym we call it a synonym right there is a a set of words we call it a synonym do you know what is synonym what is synonym like same meaning similar meaning similar same meaning, same meaning. Same similar meaning, right? meaning. Same, same meaning, meaning with different words yeah for yeah. example uh, the synonym for happy uh, the uh, synonym for happy you can call it a smile okay similar to yeah. that okay uh for smile means yeah obviously if you are happy you will smile right so the synonym of happy will be smile so like this we have a synonym right well data engineers the another name for data engineers we can call it as etl developers because you are extracting the data you are transferring the data and you are loading the data into a system i can call you as another name if i want to give a uh, if i want to call you i will definitely call you as etl developer okay now what is your role definitely yes i will be collecting the data from the different data sources and i'll be doing the all the extractions transformations and i'll be loading into the sql system perfect right now okay i'm going to do this in order to do that we have lot of tools in the market we have to lot of tools in the market what are the tools that is available in the market um yes we do have oracle data integrator we do have sap we do have sas informatica ssis ibm all this are tool which is already helping us to do etl again i'm telling you the main work of your role here in this part of data engineering is you have to do etl extraction transformation loading so extraction transformations loading is a first thing that you will be doing as part of your task and for that don't be surprised we are in 21st century already there are a lot of tools that is available in the market and those tools which is available in the market is oracle sap ssis talent informatica acs and ibm now the question are hovering in your mind is we know that the other name for data engineers are etl developers we have to come up with a transformations doing the data cleanings and helping the team to have a proper data well now you may be thinking among this tool which is the tool that we are going to learn any guess i think this is ss advanced learning ssis ssis okay next informatica informatica okay next And then talent Okay, you're going to learn three. No, uh, we'll uh, we we will learn this DataBricks, right? I think. No, uh, what, what I'm asking is, you people have joined here to become a data engineer. So today I'm telling you, data engineer. The other name for data engineer is ETL developer. But yeah. don't be surprised. You already have certain tools in the market. Those tools I'm showing in the screen. Mm -hmm. Any yeah. guess? These are. 
these are the on premises yeah, tools um, right yeah, on premises the sir yeah, yeah. so i think we will learn a cloud version of azure yeah. in azure nanak ke mar the cloud version yes yeah data uh, factory i would like to tell you one thing i would like to tell you one thing yes this is what is this is what is data engineering you already have a tool which can do everything for you right it can extract the data for you it can transform the data for you it can also go and load the data for you okay um 21st march there is something happened for csk team can you tell what happened they changed the captain the captain the captain of csk the end of era the end of the great captaincy has come to end okay 16 years being part of one ipl team ms dhoni have stepped down from his captaincy the end of era right well we are also trying to put end to all these tools which is on prem tool this is on prem tool when i say on prem tool you have to install the software you have to go and get the server you have to get the storage space you have to go and get the processing and you have to pay lot of money for the servers all this you have to do nothing comes in this life for free everything everything comes with a price tag everything comes with a price tag right you go to airport you simply take a water bottle it comes with a price tag nothing comes free in this life in that case if i want to go and do a etl already tools are there but i need to pay i need to pay right i need to pay well as and then the uh, data is increasing unfortunately this etl tools which is already in the market are not capable of doing according to what we need okay now you may ask me is it etl really required let me give you an example if i ask you if i open your cupboard is it like table i mean is it like a person a this is like a person a and this is like a person b okay so if i ask you what type of person you are what type of person you are person b person b person b oh, i am person a if i open <laughs> my cupboard if i open my cupboard everything will fall down okay um actually uh, my mom is coming from a very strict family okay so i say her like i have a class morning i'll wake up at 6:30 i have to go at 6 o'clock then i'll do some exercise i'll go for yoga then i'll take the class again i'll take one one more batch again i'll go and uh, uh, do office works again i'll take evening batch again i'll go and uh, work hard uh, like i'm working hard for family whatever you tell whatever you tell she always scolds me if i don't maintain my cupboard or if i don't keep my room clean even if you are a chief minister even if you are a prime minister even if you are a google ceo discipline is discipline this is a rules and regulation that we have in our house okay doesn't matter who you are if you have to be in my house you have to maintain discipline this is what she says and i always get screwed with this you work for any number of companies you work hard you get this much of salary doesn't matter for me you have to have discipline this is what she says whenever she comes and opens the cupboard everything will fall like earthquake everything will fall down okay and if this is what it is okay um imagine today is friday so you i mean usually when in 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 uh, my company fridays we go with the casual wears so we sh- we wear round neck t-shirts or we wear some shirts so we usually we go and have this okay now just imagine imagine okay why you really need etl i'll tell you if you don't know have etl if you don't have that process let's see what happens okay imagine i want to sh- uh, have one black shirt in this is there anything you can identify is there anything is like you're identifying in this not really no sandosh there looks like some devil have you seen this <laughs> does it look like a devil yeah almost right but it's not a devil it's a clothes okay now <laughs> um in this imagine i want to search one black shirt 
okay black t-shirt so today is a friday right so obviously i'll be uh, trying to wear casuals for my company imagine that i have a black shirt okay i started searching black shirt among this if you are lucky enough you may get the shirt in 5 minutes you want to search right if you are lucky enough you may get shirt in 10 minutes if you are not lucky obviously it will take 30 minutes if you want to search something wantedly you will not get it okay and you know what we all have been considered as one of the unluckiest person and that is why we are sitting in this class morning 6:30 do you agree do you agree yep we are all people yep. are unlucky mm -hmm. and that is why you people are sitting in the class at 6:30 in the morning if you are lucky why you will sit in my class right so we are all unlucky so any shirt if i want to search obviously it is going to take to take me 30 minutes to search 30 minutes i'll go and search but the good thing is once you search it you have to again dump it back into the cupboard dump it back into the cupboard it will hardly take you 5 minutes so this 30 minutes is for searching dumping back is for 5 minutes like d for dumping dumping back into the system it's for 5 minutes any number of clothes you have in 5 minutes i can dump it because I'm not going to fold it or I'm not going to organize it. Simply, I'm going to dump it in my cupboard bag. But searching is taking time. Okay. Now, imagine in the case two, in the case two, for dumping or here I will call it as a for organizing, it would have taken 30 minutes. It would have taken 30 minutes. For organizing, it would have taken 30 minutes. Like properly folding, formal dress, uh, like a, uh, uh, casual dress, jeans, night dress, everything I'll put it in a separate, separate rack. You search any dress. You search any dress. Okay. You search any dress, any number of times. Maximum, you can get it in three minutes. Now, that's the difference between A and B. I am just talking about, I am just talking about a small cupboard which is 40 cross 50 in size. And for this itself, we can see that how the organized data is going to create an impact. And imagine now we are talking about data. If what if the data is also well organized? Right? So always we want to be like P, but we don't like, we don't be like P. Right? Even if I come to your house and if I open your cupboard, obviously you will also have with me like A only. Unless and until you are super responsible at your home, we all have fall into the same category. But if you have a B, for dumping it is taking 30 minutes. That's fine. But if you want to get that data searched, if you want that get material searched, if you want to get that shirt searched in just, in just, Three minutes, I can do it. And that's the beauty of organizing the data. That's the beauty of organizing the data. Okay. Another example I'll tell you. Uh, actually, today is my turn. Uh, when I say my turn, uh, in my home, uh, we have a timetable. Okay. So, Fridays, I have to cook food. Fridays, I have to cook food. I have to cook. I have to wash the vessels. I have to wash the... I mean, I have to push for put the clothes in the washing machine. So I have to do everything on my own on Fridays. So every day there is one one turn. One day my mom will take care. One day my sister will take care. One day my brother will take care. One day my dad will take care. And one day I will take care. So today it's my day. So today it's completely packed day. After class, immediately I have to go and prepare a breakfast. After breakfast, I need to go and uh, uh, get ready, uh, get fresh up. And again, I need to go and uh, do office work, meeting. So it's completely packed. Uh, in fact, I always think why I get Fridays. Okay, today is my turn now. Right? Today is my turn. I was just thinking, all this, why should I do it? All this, why should I do it? Right? Well, can I skip this? We have certain things that is already planned and we have to do it. Here also, if I directly try to keep in like, okay, it's me only we are using, right? I'm only using it. So why don't I dump it everything without, without folding or without ironing, just I'll dump it. Well, one day it may work. 
two days it may work, but not all the time it will be helpful. There comes a situation where you want to pick something and it is going to take you 30 minutes, 40 minutes time. That is not an ideal way to do it. Right? So what I'm thinking now, okay, let me organize it. I'll put a one-time effort. After one-time effort, I'll get to, I'll go and get the data properly. Okay. So as I said, right, today it's my turn to cook. If I go to kitchen, the way my mom has organized the kitchen is so beautiful. She would have told, this is where you can, you can see the groceries. This is box is where you can see the rice. This box is where you can see the dal. This box is where you can see the oil. So it becomes easy for me to go and cook. Okay. In my busy time, there is no need for me to go and search in the kitchen, which item is there in which box. Right? I don't need to do because the way the data is organized in kitchen, it's in making my work easier. Right? Now, that's where your data organized will give a, a greater results if you're doing it in the right way. Okay. Now, this is a, a traditional ETL process. Day one, uh, sorry, it's day two. Today's day two. You may not completely get the actual keywords and terminologies. But listen carefully, slowly, as and then we progress it, you will be learning more over technological words. Now, we have a data. The data is coming from different, different systems. Okay, it's coming from CRP, it's, it's CRM, it's coming from ERP. So CRM is a relational, uh, as customer relationship management, all, or we can call it as a ERP, which is again enterprise application. So we have a getting the data from flat files. All these are different, different data that is coming in. So what is my objective? It goes through a multiple process. So the entire this part, I will call it as an extraction. Okay, extraction. And I'll be calling this as a transformation. I'll be calling as a transformation. Okay. And finally, I'll be loading into a specific tables. And finally, I'll be doing a reporting. So this is an ETL. Now, as I said, the day you been considered as a data engineer, that means you have to do ETL in your projects. What is ETL? Get the data, transform it, organize it, clean it, organize it and put it in a place. That's what we do. Correct. And we were talking about already there are existing tools in the market. Are we going to le learn this? Well, to answer your question, all these are old technologies. Okay. I'll give an open challenge to you. I'll give an open challenge to you. Okay. Listen carefully. You reach out to any one of your colleagues who are already working in company. I repeat. I repeat. You reach out to anyone who is working in any of your company. Most of your friends will be working in IT, right? Your college, your schoolmates, your office mates, or maybe your uh, your uh, 12th class student, right? Your classmates, everyone, right? Talk to anyone who is working in IT. By chance, if they are starting a new project in this tool, new project, I'm talking about new project. If any one of the IT person, which you get an information that if you get to know that they're starting a new project on these tools, I will give you cash price of 1 lakh on spot. If you can get these details. I repeat, there is an open challenge between you and me. If you try to reach out to any person who's working in any of the companies, if they tell me that we are going to start a new project with the help of these tools, I'll resign my job, I'll give my job to you, and I'll give a cash price of one lakh to you. When I can say, when can I, when I can say so confidently, that means we are nowhere accepting new projects. I'm not saying it's a zero usage. Okay, I'm not saying it's a zero usage. No, there are already a lot of projects which are running on this. There are a lot of projects we are running on this, but it is all existing projects. Slowly, they will also migrate it. Still, we are using it. Okay, I'm not saying we are not using it. We are still using it. A lot of applications in the last 20, 25 years, they're still running on these tools, but no new project will start in this. Running projects, as long as it will run, it will go. 
okay now uh you you could have heard about this as well i think uh they're going to stop the production of diesel vehicles do you know this do you yes, know this yes yes, yes. Okay. when is yes, that sir. it's already started uh 2030 i think 2030 or 35 yeah so 2028 or 2029 or maybe maximum 2030 they're going to stop all the diesel vehicle production that means after 30 after 2030 you will never find a single diesel vehicle that is for sale in future a very brand new car no maybe hybrid mode will come uh, cng will come electric mode will come electric vehicles will come already it is like on the roads and you may have petrol cars but you may not have the diesel cars but does it come to end no the existing cars are can still run on diesel the only thing which I'm saying is we cannot able to get a new car in diesel, but you can existing users, let's say people who purchase this year, people who purchase the next year, they will still use it. They'll still use it. Okay. But new production will not be there. That is why I'm also telling you very confidently. There are a lot of applications which are running currently in the existing tools, but we will not be doing any new projects in these tools. The reason everything has become stable lot of challenges we are getting in this on-prem okay when i say on-prem if i want to go and use ssis if i want to use a oracle if i want to use any ibm tool here i have to go and install first i have to go and maintain the server i have to pay for the license nothing comes free everything i need to set up and then i need to project what a challenge i have is i will not be able to do this okay now in that case what's the solution you're saying that you're going to you have to do an etl pipeline but you are also saying that we are not going to use all these tools then what are we going to use it okay now if i go and install these tools in my machine i'll call it as a on prem if i go and install any of this into the servers i'll call it as a on prem so what is a on prem first of all i have to pay more buying a new software buying a new software and maintaining the server it's becoming costly okay and i need a great capital investment and i'll be talking about the uh, loss data loss okay company also has some limitations and i cannot always uh, install by myself i need a support i need a it support and also end of the day the performance hits right all these are challenges correct now let's try to figure out one by one how we can come up with a solution for this we are into the world of big data right already i have told you since you people have access to your smartphone internet smart devices the data is growing bigger 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 and we are into a big data world what you have okay what you have um in your top of your terrace in your top of your terrace you have something called water tank on terrace you can see that you have a syntax tank okay you have a syntax tank whatever tank you call right so imagine this is a water tank everyone of you have this in your house right for sure you will have in your building whether you are in a flat, whether you are in a flat, right? Or you are in an individual house, you will always have this tank. The capacity of this tank is 1000 liters of water. Okay. Now, since you are also started using more of data, water. Okay. So, this tank is not enough for you. This tank is not enough for you. All these days, it was good. Okay, all these days, like last few years, you are able to use it. But now you got married, you have wife, you have kids. Now you are using more of water now. So this tank is not enough for you. Are you going to throw this and are you going to get a, a 2000 liters tank? Are you going to do that? Come on. No. I'm asking you, the water is not sufficient for you. 1000 liters tank is there. It's not sufficient. So now your number of people in your house is also increasing. Your in-laws came, your wife came, your kid came. So a uh, lot of water you're using. 
so obviously you have to you you feel like a water shortage so you have to throw this tank and you have to get a tank for 200 uh, 2000 liters will you do it no no, no. no. i will connect no. the new obviously tank and the old we will take the new one that is what i'm saying you will throw this and you will buy the new one correct this is 1000 liters no. 1000 liters is not enough for you so you'll go with 2000 liters correct no 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 we will no. just keep the old tank and connect to the new tank and so that if extra water is there then we can store okay whatever it is you will take another 1000 liters you are buying right yes yeah you are buying it right now if you see after one stage they are not going to build a tank of huge size maybe for commercial buildings they may have 2000 liters of water tank after that they will not build like okay 3000 water tank 3000 liters 4000 liters 5000 liters no maybe they may use alternative instead of using one they may use two instead of using one they may use like three so this is 1000 liters this is 1000 liters this is 1000 liters so tomorrow i may install one more here so the size of the tank is not increasing but the number of tanks is actually increasing right or this is obviously this is what you do and people who are in bangalore i think that even you people are getting the same issues nowadays right now i'm just saying big data i'm not saying how big it is i'm not saying how big it is okay we are into the big data problem now the data is keep on increasing increasing and increasing we are not able to have that in stored in the system right now let's assume that we have a ksr students data okay we have ksr students data um i remember 2017 just uh, i'll tell you a small story okay just i'll tell you a small story 2017 we started our first batch of classes 2017 we started our first batch any guess what would have been the count of our uh, first batch the number of students one i think two or three why was my teaching so bad no 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 actually my brother la was the part of that class so i know what happened when okay <laughs> my first batch student okay my first batch the number of students i add is one and even he was also my relative only because no one will trust me if i say that hey i'll get you a job come and sit with me come and read with me i what you will get i know about you this is what the feedback that i used to get for first batch right now first batch i was teaching only for one person okay i repeat i was teaching only for one person and that too is my relative and you know what i used to take like a home tuitions for him that means he will never come i used to go there i used to go to his house so 6:30 was my first batch i used to leave home at 5:30 i travel 45 kilometers in 45 minutes okay i have to go back and i have to go to my cousin's house then i have to wake him up one day will be in good mood he will listen one day he will say no today i am sleepy you come tomorrow so again i have to come back something if you want to start life is very hard okay i am telling you an example to get the first two student you know how much of struggle we were having now not required you just know what you speak people will automatically come but in 2017 6 years back 7 years back life was so difficult for me so if i want to teach someone i have to go begging behind them hey please join please join please join that was a situation in 2017 okay and that guy also he doesn't have any even have interest just because of the uh, relative i am explaining everything and i was able to get a job okay imagine student one i was remembering his name because he's my cousin i was remembering his phone number yes he was my cousin i was remembering his address because i used to go to his house for teaching so i used to remember i used to remember everything second batch and uh, maybe luckily this guy got placed so from one student got placed now one become three three become five five become nine nine become 100 100 become 150 150 become 180 like this every batch slowly started to increase because if you people get job automatically you will get that uh, referral right 
So, hey, you join here, you join there. So, that's why every batch it started increasing. First batch, I was remembering the person's phone number, name, address. Second batch, I was not going to three people's house. I asked them to come to my house because I cannot travel three places. So, I said, say, I'm running at institute. You come to my house, you sit and you learn and you go. Now, I just know where they come from, but I don't need, don't need, know their address. Example, they're coming from Marathali, they're coming from Basungudi or they're coming from uh, Kerpuram. I know only the address, but I don't know their house, right? Slowly, the data that is storing in my brain also is reducing. First person, I know his address. Second person, I know only the landmark. Third person, third batch. I used to take an online where I just asked them, hey, please join here. But if someone is not joining, I immediately take up my phone, dial their number, call them. Hey, class has started. Please join. I used to tell. This time, I knew I don't need their address. Instead, I need their only phone numbers. Now, after phone numbers, I used to remember. I don't even used to store in my phone. I used to remember five, five people's phone number. I used to buy heart it. After that, what happened? Slowly, the data started increasing, increasing, increasing. Now, if you ask me, we have 60 people in this batch. Even if I complete the 60 people with the, the 60 people with a complete batch, I'm sorry, I cannot remember your names. Unless and until you speak in the class, unless and until you create an impact, I will never even remember your names. This is for sure. Because how many batches I'm taking, how many classes I'm taking, how many students I can remember? Definitely not possible. So what I thought, Anyway, we want to store your records because we need to keep track of it. How many students are coming? How many students are attending the classes? How many students are getting the offer, placements, everything? So, remembering is not possible. So, slowly after every batch, I started to store their phone numbers in the my contact. But as and then, I need to store more information like where they come from, how they came from, is it through a referral, how are they reaching, are they reaching from Instagram, are they reaching us through LinkedIn. All this was a big challenge for me. So, I started to store that in Excel. I started to store that in Excel. Okay. So, I started to store that in Excel. So, the maximum data that I can store in Excel is 1 million. What is 1 million? 1 million is nothing but 10 lakhs. So maybe now we have 15,000 students in KSR. The day we also grow up and we train 10,000 students, 10 lakh students, we still store the data in Excel. After that, after that, where can I store? Your limit of the Excel itself is 10 lakhs. After that, you have to take a new Excel. Again, I have to take a new Excel. Again, I have to take a new Excel. Like this, imagine every time I keep on increasing, forget about only 10 lakhs. If I talk about Amazon users, we have 6 crore customers. So obviously the data will increase. Where you can go and store? Can you go and store it in Excel? No. Can you go and store it in Oracle database? No. Can you store it in MySQL database? No. Imagine what if my data is 2 terabyte. Imagine, what if my data is 2 terabyte? Where will I go and store? Where will I go and store? 2 terabyte of data. My laptop itself is 1 terabyte of data. My laptop itself is 1 terabyte of data. In, in, in my laptop, the capacity of my laptop is, hard disk is 1 terabyte. But if I want to store 2 terabyte of my laptop data of my KSR students, where will I go and store? So I came up with one idea. In order to maintain my KSR data, which is nothing but one terabyte. Today it's one terabyte, okay? I'm spending for one laptop is enough. One laptop is enough. See, I'll show you. I'll show you. This is my my computer. Yeah. So, um, 222 GB, uh, 462 GB, and... Uh, 468 GB. So almost I have 1000 GB. That is nothing but 1 terabyte. So today to store 1 terabyte of my data, I have my one laptop. The cost is 1 lakh. The entire database management expense is 1 lakh. Fine. But obviously, 
we have confidence on ourselves we are not going to stop at this position imagine that in future we grow up to 10 terabytes obviously more people will join more people will get placed more people we know that right from 1 terabyte the data is now increasing to 10 terabyte very simple will i go and purchase 10 laptops one laptop one terabyte 10 laptops 10 terabyte anything wrong can we do that no. we can do that but it is very hard to manage the data in this case uh, are costly. you saying it's expensive is it expensive yes expensive definitely expensive maintenance is also difficult that's fine imagine case has money they'll buy it what is for you? They have money, they'll buy it. What is the problem? We, we need uh, manpower as well, right? For 10 security, laptop. But <laughs> still managing 10 different uh, data source, compiling. If you need particular information, you have to search for 10 laptops. Uh, mm -hmm. So so that will become difficult. Even Ravana is having only 10 heads, not 10 hands. Right? Even Ravana has only 10 heads. He doesn't have 10 hands. No, who will go and operate these 10 laptops? Who will go and operate these 10 laptops now? Right? I have a data. Now that I have to, I have 10 terabyte of data and you're choosing an option of buying 10 laptops. Fine. I agree that you have money. So 10 lakhs is not a big amount for you. So you're buying. I'm okay with that. But who is going to operate? For, 10 op for operating the 10 laptops, you need to hire 10 people. For all the 10 people, you need to give salary. Each one will be in different, different location. Tomorrow, Mahesh is asking, from each batch, can you tell me who has scored the highest package? So you will go and search in 10 laptops first. In this laptop, you will go and search who is the highest package. In this laptop, you will go and see who is the highest package. In this, you will find the highest package. Among this, you have to find one more maximum. Life is so hard because the data is split across the systems. Each and every system becomes an individual system. And as I said, no one is even having 10 hands to use a laptop. You have to hire 10 people. Life is challenging. Life is challenging. Now, I will never want to do this. That means I don't want to store the data in my on-prem. What is on-prem? My system is on-prem. I'm storing the data in my on-prem. I was actually talking to Mahesh. Mahesh, what is this, Mahesh? One side, should we be happy that we are improving as a business? Or one side, should we worry about how can we handle these problems? I was just asking, asking, asking. Should I focus on classes? Should you focus on the collecting the fees? Or who will focus on the my data? And even if you are ready to give 10 lakhs, who will manage these 10 laptops? I can manage only one laptop at a time. I cannot have 10 mobiles at the same time, right? I can use one at a time. So we are thinking, 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 thinking. Okay. We don't know what to do now. Oof. What we can do? What we can do? One side, should I be happy that my business is improving? One side, should I be sad that I'm not able to manage this? What should I do? Right? And I was thinking about money. We need to spend 10 lakhs. We need to spend 10 lakhs to maintain KSR data of 10 terabyte. Okay. Now, when we're actually thinking, suddenly, I think mostly would have seen this as well. Uh, whenever you, you have been uh, in the night when you go for a walk in the terrace, right? There's something called, there's something called moving star. There's something called moving star. Have you ever seen this? Somewhere, have you seen any star that is moving? For sure, definitely would have at least experienced once in your life. You, you feel like you're on the terrace walking, you're, you're looking at the sky. Suddenly, something will feel like moving. Have you seen this? Anyone? Yeah, sometimes. Yes, once, I guess. Yeah. Yes. By the time you call your friends, it will disappear. Yes or no? And yes. they'll say, hey, you're mad or what? Why star will move? They'll start shouting at you. Right? But each and every one would have experienced this. I have experienced. 
most of the times night times i always uh, try to go for a walk i used to look at the sky i used to lie down i look at the sky that peace of mind you get when you look at the sky it's uh, priceless try it once okay after your heavy hectic work like morning 6:30 or wake up right so after your work 9 9:30 go to terrace after your dinner just do a, a 30 minutes walk just look at the sky the way you will get the peace of mind you'll sleep very well and while looking at the sky suddenly you feel like okay there is a moving star and you feel like it's moving but suddenly you ask you call someone and show it it will disappear right we call this as lucky star we call this as lucky star okay so i and mahesh we both were discussing like mahesh what to do mahesh we have 10 terabyte of data and uh, we are not able to store it we are have to look for another system suddenly a person who came from sky a moving star we can call it as a lucky star he came to us and he's saying that boss you're good at training you take training mahesh good at mentoring let him mentor i am good at managing the data you give it to me I was like who is who are you okay some ex person came some ex person came to us he saying that uh, we are discussing right he came to us uh, maybe it's a coincidence or i don't know when you are discussing about my how to manage this 10 terabyte of data mesh uh, who can wake up and go and hire 10 people first of all we are like having a Uh, i mean uh, net profit is going down and now we have to hire a 10 people to manage the 10 laptops where can we go when we were discussing suddenly someone from sky came down and say that santosh okay you're good at training you take training mahesh you're good at managing things let you manage well i am there i am there to take care of your data i asked who are you i asked who are you and he told me i am cloud i am cloud i am very good at managing all this i cannot come take training like you i cannot manage the classes like you like what mahesh is doing but i can make sure that i can give you the one of the best solution who are you cloud you need not buy 10 laptops you need not use 10 lakhs he simply says that he simply says that you don't need to spend spend 10 lakhs you give me 3 lakhs i'll take care of your data he simply said that you don't give me 10 lakhs you just give me 3 lakhs i will take care of your data wow this is what i was looking for first of all i don't have time for other things my time is only for classes my his time is only for talking to students where we can go and manage this data well suddenly someone comes from sky says that hey don't worry i will manage your data and we also started trusting it how do we trust it we'll see later but at this point of time we have a solution for our problem we have a solution for our problem rather than storing the 10 terabyte of data in my personal machine or in my on prem machine we have decided to go for cloud imagine we are talking only about 10 terabyte of data for our ksr ksr is a 0.1% of the company size when i compare with amazon when i compare with google when i compare with flipkart startup company ksr is very very small we are talking in terms of terabyte but we know that how the data is increasing and i am talking only about terabyte okay megabyte gigabyte terabyte after that petabyte after that exabyte after that zettabyte and by 2020 we can see that the data is 40 gigabyte what is gigabyte gigabyte is 10 to the power of 21 just imagine the data that is getting generated from different different companies different different organizations is not in terabyte it is in gigabyte if you don't know what is gigabyte it is 10 to the power of 21 you still don't understand 40 followed by 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and it goes on goes on goes on goes on 21 zeros 21 zeros and we are talking and very very worrying about 10 terabyte of data in ksr now where will i store this come on i am very lazy 
I have taken this snapshot only till 2020. After 2020, you know what happened. I know what happened. COVID came. Every student also started using smartphone, internet, smartphone, usage. Data kept on increasing. And it is expected that by 2025, it will turn from 40 gigabyte in 2020. It will turn to 175. Now, where will I go and store this? We are still worrying about terabyte and we are worrying about gigabytes in future. What do I do to handle all this? I'm going for cloud computing. I am going for cloud computing. Now, the beauty of cloud computing is cost effective. You need not pay 10 lakhs, sir. You pay 3 lakhs, sir. I'll take care of you, sir. He says that. And you can store unlimited data. Unlimited data. You keep on increasing your business. I'll keep on storing the data. Backup recovery, flexibility, faster deployment. All this is making me to use cloud computing. Now, if you people are thinking about where I am going to build an ETL pipeline, whether are you going to build it in AWS or are you going to build it in Azure or are you going to build it in GCP, it's completely up to you. Okay. Imagine now I have a problem to store data now. I will be choosing pen drive to store the data. Do you all know pen drive? Yes. Yes, yes. Yes. Yes, Sandosh. Pen drive is a device which stores your data. For time being, imagine that I have a 1 GB of data. Maybe I'll store it in pen drive. Now, question to you. Question to you. Pen drive is a device which gets stored the data, correct? But in pen drive, we have Samsung pen drive is there. Sony pen drive is there. Transcend pen drive is there. SanDisk pen drive is there, right? Tell me which pen drive you will buy. SanDisk. Why? Anyone, like every, every any pen drive will work. It's well said. Anyone, what is there? Yeah, you buy SanDisk, you buy uh, Sony, you buy Samsung. What is there? Every pen drive is a pen drive. Every pen drive performs exactly the same operation. Slightly a bit of changes will be there. Maybe the way you are copying to a pen drive and reading from the pen drive, maybe the fastness will be there. Sony, maybe it's more uh, faster compared to the read and write operations. Which you Say, for example, you plug in it and you copy one file to file. Maybe uh, the files may copy slower depending on the USB port, depending on the size, depending on the um, operation, bits per second, something will be there. How many bits I can copy from one place? Well, it's fine, right? Whether you're using Sony, fine. Whether you're using Sandus, you're fine, right? Now, even in my current organization, we have a problem now to store the data. Instead of pen drive, I am choosing cloud. Will I, if I choose AWS or will, if I choose Microsoft Azure, do you have any problem? Do you have any problem? No. If, if I use Sony if pen drive or if I use Samsung no, no. pen drive, is there any problem? No. 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 Oof. Finally, we have come to a stage where cloud services is going to be helpful for you in terms of data storage and data processing. The complete ETL, we have moved from on-prem to cloud. So we are going to do the entire data cleaning, data transformation, extracting, everything we are going to do in cloud. Which cloud? It's completely your decision. When I say your decision, your client's decision. Your client will decide, hey, I can use AWS. Hey, I can use Azure. I can use GCP. Okay. Now, listen carefully. Listen carefully. Yesterday, till yesterday, till yesterday, I was talking only about data engineer. Till yesterday, I was talking only about data engineer. Who is a data engineer? 
data engineer is a person who extracts the data, transforms the data, and loads the data into a target table for future purpose. You are a data engineer. But where are you doing? Where are you doing? So if you are doing it in on-prem, right? If you are doing it in on-prem or if you are doing with the big data technologies, so people were actually being called as big data engineers. So this is a data engineer. This is a generalized term. Now people are called big data engineers. If, if you see in 2014-2018, uh, this was a very famous role, big data engineer. Oh, I'm big data engineer. I work with big data. Uh, all this, they're on-prem. People who are working in, in I mean, Informatica, Binisha or IBM, this were called as, okay. But now we have stopped using on-prem. We have stopped using on-prem. Now, suppose if you learn Azure, Suppose if you learn Azure, okay, and you learn Azure, you build the pipeline in Azure, you solve this problem of ETL in Azure, you are called as Azure Data Engineer. You are called as Azure Data Engineer. If you learn Azure, okay, I'm learning AWS. In that case, you are called as AWS Data Engineer. Okay. Imagine I have used GCP for building the pipelines. You are called GCP Data Engineer. Whichever you learn, we call it like you. You learn Azure, we call it as Azure Data Engineering. You learn GCP, we'll call it as GCP Data Engineer. You call, you learn Azure, we'll call, we will, you learn AWS, we'll call you AWS Data Engineer. Now, what this course is all about, what? What have you heard? Data Engineer. In Data Engineer, which one you're going to focus? It's completely Azure. up to you. Azure. Okay. Data now, now, final point. Final point, if you know more than one cloud, that means you know this and you know this, or you know this, or you know this. Out of three, out of three, you know any two, then I cannot call, I am AWS engineer and I am Azure data engineer. You cannot say both. Okay, I cannot say I am data engineer along with GCP and Azure. You cannot say that, right? So, I will call you as, if you know more than one cloud, I will not specifically call you Azure. I will not specifically call you AWS. I will not specifically call you GCP. I will simply call you as cloud data engineer. If you know more than one cloud. If I'm teaching only AWS, you will be called as Azure data engineer. If I teach only... Uh, uh, GCP, I'll call you as a GCP data engineer. But here, if I'm learning more than one cloud, I can call myself as a cloud data engineer. There will be slight, slight, small, small difference will be there. Okay, there is nothing much difference. Here, I will be using different, different services. There, I'll be using different, different services. That's all. See, today, I feel like eating pizza. Okay, today, imagine that I'm like feeling like eating pizza. Will I eat in Domino's or will I eat in Pizza? It's up to my wish. Right? Both the places I get pizza. Both the shops I get pizza. And I'll start comparing where I have offers today. Friday's offer. Where I have buy one, get one. Where there is tasty. Where I will get faster. Where the delivery is faster. Where there is no price for delivery. Where I will, it will have a high quality food. I will compare everything. And then I will decide, will I go with Pizza Hut? Or will I go with Domino's? Now that is what companies also will start comparing pros and cons of each and every cloud. Depending on that, we will decide which cloud to go for it. Okay. Now, apart from this, there is something which you would have heard about this called a snowflake. Apart from this four cloud services, there is another one which will be calling it a snowflake. You would have heard about it. Okay. You would have heard about Snowflake. Now, this is also one of the ETL that we can do with the help of 
in the cloud itself. It is also called cloud-based ETL development. You can do it alone with Snowflake also you can do it. But if you talk about a cloud service like Azure AWS, it has lot of features. You can build a web application. You can build a mobile application. You can build your data science projects. You can build your uh, like any college projects also. Data engineering is just a part. But if you take about this tools, you can build anything. You can build anything. So if you consider as a cloud, you can see in my case for KSR data, I have to store data for storing. Maybe I've used cloud for processing. Also, I may use cloud for uploading all your videos, right? Every single video that is uh, that is getting captured for the last one hour. I'm speaking continuously. I'm speaking this getting generated. The video is getting generated. The size of the data is getting generated. I don't need to store it. So I'll use for general purpose. But if I'm talking about Snowflake, I will be specifically focusing for ETL. Only for ETL, I'll be using. So Snowflake also is having an advantage where you can connect to any of the cloud services. Okay. Now, listen carefully. Listen carefully. Choosing the cloud services completely depends on client. Some companies, see, I'll be very honest. I always eat pizza in pizza. My brother always eats pizza in Domino's. It's both of their own wish. For me, I feel this is good. For him, it's evil good. There's nothing like wrong or correct here. Everyone has their own interest. Everyone will have their own likes. As simple as that. So imagine you're buying a pen drive. You buy any pen drive. You buy Sony or you buy Samsung. But I always buy Sony because I like Sony. It's a brand. I assume that Sony is better than all other. But if I go and do a research, slightly variations will be there, right? Now, question to you, okay? We have data engineer, okay? For data engineers, listen carefully, listen carefully. The first thing that you need to know for data engineer is SQL. Without SQL, you can't even move forward. Without SQL, you can't even move forward because SQL is the only language which we can communicate to a database. Obviously, everything is a database, right? Okay, next. We will have Python. We will have Python. So, you'll be learning Python. So, Python is a programming language that I'll, I'll be learning in order to... I'll be learning in order to communicate to any other tool. Then data warehousing concepts, everything is fine, right? Next, you have to choose a cloud. One cloud I need to choose. Now, this is where this is where the course gets splitted into two. Now, this is where the course gets splitted into two. If you are interested in learning Azure, you will be put into one course. If you are interested in Snowflake with AWS, you will be put into another course. So until the Python class, you will all be present in the same batch. Everyone will be present in the same batch. Now, after that, you will be diverted into two batches. If you are willing to learn Azure, you will continue with the same batch. If you are willing, with, willing to learn Snowflake, and AWS, you'll be put into another batch. So another trainer comes in who takes care of AWS and Snowflake. No, 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 no. I want to learn everything. You can learn. If you want to become a cloud engineer, you have to learn minimum two. So learn this, learn this. But if you learn only Azure, you will be called as Azure Data Engineer. You will be called as Azure data engineer if you learn only aws you'll be called as aws data engineer if you learn both obviously you'll be called as cloud engineer but i would suggest don't unless and until you have a very good experience like 15 years experience 16 years experience in it where your job is like needs uh, more skill you can opt for both because cloud engine is always demand knowing more than one is what companies are preferring every company they need a person who knows both because still the companies are also not finalized. Hey, for this problem, will I use AWS or will I use Azure? I, the companies have not finalized. 
But if you know AWS and imagine the company is looking for Azure, they'll hire another person now. But if you know both, they will use you only. So you still have a job in your hand, right? Unless and until you have a very good IT experience working with more than seven years, eight years, 10 years, learn both so that you call yourself as a cloud engineer. But no, I am beginning. I'm learning for the first time. I want to get into IT. Uh, someone said that data engineering is demand. If you want to just start with it, start any one. Whether to go with AWS or to go with Azure, it's completely up to your decision. Again, I'm telling, again, I'm telling both has pros and cons. Both has pros and cons. For example, imagine iPhone. Imagine iPhone iPhone is one of the best ever phone that we have in the market. Best ever phone. One of the top class phone you see is iPhone. I've seen a lot of people, uh, they go for paragliding by mistake, they drop the phone and they're still able to see the phone. And one person dropped the phone in the fire, still sees a phone. One person puts down a phone, a water, I mean, puts the phone in water, still it's a waterproof. One of the best phone is iPhone. If that is the best phone, why not everyone is having that? Why not everyone is having that? It's the best phone, right? Why not everyone is having it? It's costly, right? Yes. Affordability comes into picture. If KSR is able to afford AWS, I'll go with it. If KSR is affordable with Azure, I will go with it. End of the day, pricing matters pricing matters and flexibility matters see i'm i'm very honest with you i have i'm in a house three kilometers i have dominoes five kilometers i have kfc which one i'll choose i will choose i'll choose a distance i'll choose how much time i have i'll choose what i need to have and i'll choose the price i'll choose the offers then i'll decide Similarly, every company have the flexibility to decide AWS or Azure. At this point of time, I can say that both are equally good. Both are equally good. Whether you want to learn AWS or you want to Azure, it's completely up to you. Okay. With that, at that cloud place, the course gets split. That means imagine we have imagine we have almost how many are there imagine we have 60 people right 61 are there so minus one 60 are there so in the 60 60 people will be along with me for the first for two months two two and a half months we will all be learning together after two months you'll be split into two batches people who would like to continue with azure will be there in my batch and people who would like to go for let's say another batch that is, they want to learn Snowflake, they'll be split it. And people who need both, you can attend one class and the another batch, you can choose at different timings or you can go with recordings. Okay. So this will be the plan. As part of this particular course, I'm going to teach Microsoft Azure. So that means if you continue with along with me for four and a half months, you'll become Azure Data Engineer. Okay. If you're interested in AWS, then you have to jump after a certain extent you have to have a switch over between the course okay so this is about the cloud data engineer or specifically if you're focusing on snowflake or specifically focusing on aws or specifically you're focusing on azure is that clear oh, yes and okay yes so yes. i'll give a uh, I'll give a stop here. So I'll, I'll just ask if you have any questions. If not, we will continue. We'll start with a roadmap in the next class. But at this point of time, if you have any questions on which to choose, what to choose. Well, as I said, right, it's all company's decision. But both is in demand. Both are in demand. Whether you want to do AWS or you want to do Azure, it's up to you. Uh, Santos, I have one question in mind, like uh, if we want to learn Azure, then Azure, I guess uh, we can practice with one credit card or debit card for one month, right? So is there any solution to that problem? Both the ways, it is pricing only. Both the ways, you have to spend money. Whether you do it in AWS or you spend it in Azure, you have to use your credit card. So there is nothing like if I choose Azure because of the practice, uh, because of the one month free, I'll choose Azure. That doesn't work. Both has to be, both you have to create an account, both you have to pay for it.
Uh, yes, Santosh, I have a question. Uh, this is regarding a certification. Since both the platform offer certification, in fact, AWS recently started uh, data engineering. So, are you suggesting for any certification in Azure or AWS? See, uh, definitely certification uh, creates an impact. Uh, as of now, uh, since I'm taking care of Azure, I can say that you can take DP203 once you complete this project. For Azure, uh, I mean, for AWS, you have a separate uh, certification for that. If you're going with AWS Snowflake, you can take the certifications. But uh, see, as far as I uh, believe, I always believe in knowledge and skills rather than certificates. So. Try to cover up all the classes first. Later, if the company is demanding, take for it. Because usually what happens, right? Everyone will go inside the company and then take certificates. Because that is where company will sponsor you. So that way you can do it. Or if you really need to take before that, you can opt for it. Whichever tool, you, whichever cloud you're learning, take a certificate in that. So how about uh, so See, GCP is also uh, showing its true color, as in then one of the best is always Google, but Google is yet to show its true colors in data pipelines. It is good. It is start improving it, okay? Uh, we have also started using GCP for a couple of other pipelines for the project, but yeah, it's improving. So in future, if it is really required, we will cover GCP as well. Okay, for now, there is no course for this. For, right? that, for now, we are covering AWS and Azure. In future, okay. if, if more number of projects is coming in GCP, obviously, we will teach another one month for GCP as well. Okay. Thank hey, you. Uh, hey, Santosh. Do, do you have like few minutes to talk after the class? How uh, is your schedule? Uh, you, you can just reach out to our team. Maybe they look at my calendar and block it because I have another class. So you can always reach out to our team. Our team can uh, take up all your questions and we can connect offline if really required. That's good. Thanks. Uh, hi, Shantos. Uh, as for current market scenario, uh, mostly Fortune 500 companies are using Azure only, right? See, as I said, right, it all depends. Uh, pricing wise, Azure is less, AWS is more. See, I'll tell you very openly one of the best ever cloud service that what we have in the current market is AWS. Next goes to micro, uh, Azure. Next goes to GCP. Next goes to Y. We don't usually use this, but one, two, three is a ranking given. But not always I'll go with one. See, for example, I, I think I've given you this example. I think imagine um, in KSR. We are hiring one person. Okay, we are hiring one person who can actually collect the fees and takes care of finance. Okay, we are looking for a person who takes care of the finance in KSR. Okay, the main requirement is he has to be very good in mathematics. He has to very be very good in mathematics. Okay, that's the main focus. Imagine we went for IIT Tirupati. We went for campus. From KSR, we went for campus. Student number A, student name B. Student A, student A in science he has scored 99, in English he has scored 98, in um, social science maybe he has scored 97, in max he has scored 70. Okay, this is person number A. Person number B, science he has scored 35, English he has scored 34. Uh, social science maybe has scored 50 and max he has scored 100. So tell me, will you hire person A or will you hire person B for your KSR? Will you hire person obviously, A or person B? Obviously person B. Why yes. person B? He has scored only 45%. Yeah, but uh, the, uh, the quality or the a requirement we have for mathematics, right? Okay. He, he should be good at mathematics. Okay. That's why. So, for example, is a first rank student, is a last rank student, but still I am using the last rank, right? Because depends, depends. So it also depends. You need not always go with. You need not always go with the first rank based on the performance. You can see for what use case, what is required. In my case, I want one who has to be excellent in mathematics. So I went for second rank. Like that, choosing the cloud service also really requires read and requirements. So depending on that, we can choose it. Are we good? Yes. 
ஒரு <laughs> sql followed by python it will go up to 2 to 1 and a half months after that you still have time to decide whether to opt for aws or you opt for gcp i mean gcp or you opt opt for azure so now at this point of time azure versus aws is what we have the competition so we will cover more what are the companies using azure what are the companies you are using aws see a lot of company will have a, a dream company right for example uh, i have a dream company for me i need to work in microsoft that's a dream company so one person will be there his dream will be to work in amazon amazon is a very good company he wants to work in amazon in amazon why will they use azure so in amazon they have to use aws only so those type of people who are specifically looking Oh, okay i have a certain dream of companies maybe they look for aws some people okay i am i want to join microsoft maybe i look for microsoft azure like this lot of priority comes into picture okay uh, companies openings job openings which is easier which is tough which requires lot of remembering skills which is easier all this matters in order to choose it you still have time to choose two and a half months is still there after two and a half months you can go for it okay if you want to go with both you're always welcome you can learn both uh, santosh why data engineer why not data science um why not data science i've told you that data engineering is a route without route nothing you'll have it nowadays the demand for data engineering data analysis everywhere there is some problem what is the problem we don't have proper data in order to get that proper data is what you are going to learn data engineering i would say all are demand but package wise opening wise demand wise data engineering is what people are looking for because when you don't have a proper data engineers we will not even have the all the top 3 then what is the purpose of learning data engineering or data science i think i'm not saying it's completely down at this point of time the major problem all the companies are facing is data if they don't have the proper data none of the other things can work and that is why we are opting for a technology which is a root for everything and once you learn data engineering you can always jump to data science or data analytics depending on your upskilling skills you can learn anything in future no one is stopping you so the how the ladder goes so it's a data analyst data science data engineering or data engineering then you can go with anyone uh ideally ladder goes like this first data science engineering followed by data analyst followed by a data scientist but some people are there hey i don't like coding who will go and learn data engineering forget it for them the path will be very straight forward they'll start with data analyst they'll end with data scientist it all depends on your need it depends see if you want high package you have to learn the toughest one the toughest one is data engineer so people are there hey fine you work anywhere i want only one job i want 8 to 5 job i want 40000 salary you tell me one opening learn data analyst no coding simple okay thanks that answers my question thanks okay with all that we'll stop here we'll continue the next class thank you all